everybody, how's it going? Uh, tonight, I finally got done the Ancient Alpha Dimetrodon. And I wanted to show you. Here we got his head. Got his eye there. Which, honestly, those are one of the better eyes I've done on a creature. You got a little bit of cyan in the back of the eye. It's kind of hard to tell what the classic uh, yellow and black that the Dimetrodon that it was beforehand had. You see the cyan a little bit better in this eye. Uh, again, pretty much similar. We got the um, the body. Uh, when I applied the Mod Podge, I used this big thing of it, which, thinking about it now, it might honestly be more glossy than the one I used on the Diablos. Which, if so, um, it actually does work rather nicely with this beast. It makes it look nice and wet and slimy, which... Uh, Really brings out the colors nicely. Uh, it makes it almost like a fish, which, part with the colors and the stripes, it actually kind of reminds me of one of those Goliath tiger fish, which is weird considering they don't have the same colors. And note to self, make a Goliath tiger fish at one point or another. Anyways, um, if that's the case, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get a different kind of mod podge with a little, which sucks a little bit considering that that tube is like eight bucks. Either way, um, you know, that's okay. I guess at least it'll stay around longer, um, you know, in case I need to make anything look wet. But anyway, back onto this uh, dude when he's finished here. By the way, pulling out his jaw is a pain, just because he got very little of a chin. Uh, so here's the inside of his mouth. Got some cyan dots in there. Nice uh, gloss in there for make it nice and wet. Um, it did, I did originally apply super glue, uh, before the, um, the what's it, the, uh, before I knew the Mod Podge was glossy. Um, we got all the teeth here, we got the two large teeth kind of sticking out the back here, which appears to have some sort of runoff. Crap, I must, I must have not seen that, which is weird considering I could have swore I saw that. Well, I'll fix that up. I mean, the the tooth paint should be should end right there. But I'll I'll fix that. I apologize, folks. It's a little unprofessional of me. Um, of course, we got the teeth here at the uh, at the back there, kind of gross and gnarly looking. Um, we got a double row similar to like a Anginath, where it got the teeth at the um top there. Uh. Shit, is that a load of mud punch that didn't dry? Like I said, this dude was kind of... He didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted. For example, like, uh, the whole joint in the back of the head, you guys might notice, is still green. It's because, um, a decent dude on here, I can't remember, it was like KSI Productions or something. Maybe that's what he's called. Either way, um, and sorry if I didn't get that right. Um, he got like a little Godzilla as his, um... As his logo, or may not logo, what do you call it, the little picture uh, that people see and know it's your channel. Either way, um, but yeah, pretty much, he actually told me to sand it down with sandpaper, which is very ironic, considering the place that I go to make money often has me sand things down, and I didn't think about it. Well, you see, it was already a little too late by that point, so I just figured I'd leave it, which... Honestly, the gray kind of complements the reds in a weird way. It's kind of like a watermelony vibe for me. It don't... What I meant to say is that it don't honestly look too bad, in my opinion. Now, a few people might disagree with me, but that's okay. So, the horn was done in sort of a... I mean, you guys saw the base coat I used for it. And then I did sort of a black to brown wash over it a few different times with a whiter tip at the end. Give it that nice keratin look. I got a little bit of orange in the back there. Got this weird spike growing out of his neck. All the spines coming out. Got a broken spine right there. Uh, which, actually, I probably could uh, do something to that to make it look more wet. I probably could have had a little bit of blood running down. Like I said, not the best job I've ever done, but I think he looks decent. Um... You know, we got the underneath here, kind of basic. Some stripes run down, some don't. Um, but even, uh, like for example, there were spikes here and there, but they kind of look, excuse me, they kind of looked bad. So I ditched them. I got rid of them. 
that with that exact O shank standing right there. Um, and then we got his tail here, which was originally in a slightly less vibrant yellow. I did the yellows in a more uh, light or a more bright kind of color last night just because it, it looked a little sloppy beforehand and and still kind of, I don't know, it looks better than what it did. Um, there's a lot better to find the grooves here as there are um, here because the, the skin is more bunched up on this side than it is on that side, of course, but either way, oh, sorry. Um, either way, uh... That's pretty much how that, or that's pretty much why that's like that. Um, as to why there's runoffs like here and there, I honestly don't know why that turned out like that. Um, anyways, you know, I mean, it don't really matter all that much. Uh, to me, it still looks nice. You know, like I said, this is more of, honestly, I don't really even know what this dude is. I mean, I got, I got a sort of backstory made up for him, but not like, not nothing too advanced. I meant just in terms of design. It was originally going to be an exact copy of the level 40 Dimensiodon from Jurassic World the game. But then I kind of went my own way. Gave him some antlers and, you know, like these little protuberances on his head and neck. And made his spikes more, uh, more or less uh, different looking. I pretty much knew it wasn't going to look exactly like the one in the game. So I just said screw it and did my own thing. Um, honestly, he still has articulation in his neck, as you guys can see. His his head, his neck can turn, reveals the green a little bit better. Um, yep, and I think there's like a little patch of green that's somewhere throughout the neck. Let me just snap his neck there. And that, <laughs> yeah, I love my sound effects. Anyway. No, actually, damn, that, that stuck out pretty nice. But I don't know. I mean, to me, despite the, the downfalls, this guy has a pretty, has a nice little charm to him, you know? I mean, also, there's cyan around the nostrils. I figured I'd put that there because I thought it looked nice. Um, This guy still has a nice little charm to me, or to him, in my opinion. You know, he kind of, um, I don't know, despite his sloppiness, I don't know. I I still like him quite a bit. And I, I can fix that, just because that seems a little too sloppy, in my opinion, right there. I'll fix that after the video. Um, so just imagine that as, like, the same orange color as everywhere else, and you get the idea. Um, if any of you guys want to see that uh, touched up, then sure, why not? Um, you got the paws here, which I did in sort of, like, a brownish, dark type color with red mostly running through the fingers. Like I said, kind of kind of uh, touchy, like everything else about this dude. Uh, his limbs move up and down. You know, they, they move up and down nicely. I prefer not to um, not to turn them outwards like that, just because I don't want to go ruin ruining a bunch of the stuff that already is kind of sort of there. You know, and of course, you know, it goes up like that. Um, you know, the legs also move, move like so, and honestly, like I said, the wet look to him actually pulls off really nice on this guy, got the, uh, the back paws there, or the back feet, I guess you could say, with little dried pieces of, who's a what's, it's, um, still not properly dried, um, Honestly, yeah, that's pretty much what this, that's pretty much the description of what this guy looks like. Uh, Backstory-wise, hell, uh, let me see what I got here. Um, After the whole Indominus incident from, uh, you know, the Jurassic World, a lot of the species were able to roam the whole island once again. Uh, a few of these being Dementrodons, uh, of which the DNA was collected from ancient blood-sucking insects that existed before mosquitoes and filled the same niche. From that point on, the Dimetrodons were able to be cloned. And, of course, you know, with a lot of other beasts, uh, various DNAs were mixed in with some. And with some particular specimens, they would mix some, some fish, some extra amphibian, um, a few different un 
known animals, I guess you could say. And on occasion, these uh, genes would eventually be passed onto the offspring, and some would be born as special breeds, I guess you could say. Usually, all of them looking somewhat different from the next, but this being one. So essentially, let me get a demonstration. Bear with me, folks. Hold on one second. So, okay. Here would be a normal Dimetrodon, correct? Swampy habitat type animal, you know. Live in uh, groups known as troops, similar to gorillas. A Dimetrodon troop would be led by a alpha of either gender, considering they're mostly around the same size for each gender. It's mostly who's the more intelligent and aggressive of individuals usually becomes the leader of the troop. Except for when these ghost gene variants come along. These dudes essentially almost always become the uh, the dominant individual when they're born just due to the uh, clashing DNAs usually making them stronger, larger, and a hell of a lot more aggressive, being able to pretty much dominate the competition, if you know what I'm saying. Essentially, uh, I guess you could say these, um, these Dimetrodons in particular are essentially like the... Uh, when they are born, which frankly there's about, hell, there's about a, uh, let me see, if there's 100%, it would roughly be, let me calculate my head, it would be about a 30, let me see. Terrible at math, just hold on a second. Be about a 30, 70 chance of these things being born. With the 30% of them being born with a 70% chance of them not. And essentially, uh, because of their crazy wild look, uh, the natives of Isla Nublar, yes, there are natives, um, almost worship these animals in a few different ways. You know, giving them scraps of food, and sometimes even finding them as young and befriending them. Which in turn, when these specific individuals grow up to uh, become they uh, to become the alphas of their group, usually becoming the alphas. Um, when they befriend the tribe's people, they manage to pass on the um, behaviors onto the others due to the others copying the, uh, the alpha of the group. So in other words, uh, any group, or sorry, any native tribe on Isla Nublar that is lucky enough to encounter one of these beasts when they're young and, um, you know, befriend it, they're lucky enough to have a whole troop of Dimetrodons, which can range from anywhere from 4 to 8 to 14 individuals of fully grown Dimetrodons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some serious power. And the tribes know it, usually being able to conquer other tribes of the same region. And if you guys are wondering, wait a second, Chance, how are the tribes on Isla Nublar after the whole place was evicted, or after most of the natives were evicted, in order to make the park to begin with? Well, some various tribes uh, from Isla, Isla Nublar managed to hide out in the uppermost regions of the island, even during its construction, managing to avoid... A lot of the settlements until hell broke loose from the Indominus and it was eventually killed by the Gila Rex and etc. etc. Um, from that point on, uh, the natives quickly adapted to the dinosaur threats and over time, over the generations of the island being untouched by the outside world due to the government classifying it as a, what is that word I'm looking for? Contaminated, yeah, contaminated by various uh, diseases. Um, the place almost became sort of a ecological preserve, sort of like Sorna. And um, as such, the local tribes of indigenous people incorporated dinosaurs and the various other prehistoric monsters that lived on the island in their religion, religions, lives, 
uh, food stocks, etc. And um, these ghost lineage alpha dementronons, as you would say, were very highly prized. A legend going around that if a dementronon lives long enough, they become one of these beasts, reincarnated. So that's pretty much the uh, the lore uh, described. If anybody got a question for me about it, let me know. Um, this is pretty much the ancient Alpha Dimetrodon uh, with the biology explained and the design done. Again, I apologize for the sloppiness of the tooth. God, that is bothering me. Anyways, I hope all of you have a wonderful night. And thank you for watching.